play with the board, or I'll get bored. And you don't want that. Maybe he's late the last flight back to Limbo. Which board to at the Devil's Doorway? This is Kevin Tenney's 1993 in name only sequel to his cult hit from 1986, Witchboard. The plot A young, struggling artist is moving into her very own apartment complex, and uh, right off the bat, she finds a Ouija board or a witch board, and she decides to screw around with it on her own. And uh, in that, she summons a previous tenant of the apartment. And now it is up to the landlord's sister and her brother to stop the evil. This is either a watered down or weak attempt to try and outdo the first movie, depending on how you look at it. While there are some more obviously time-consuming camera tricks and techniques used, everything else seems somewhat lazy and repetitive as if we've done this before. Oh wait, we did. There are some amusing moments here, though, that make the film feel more epic than it actually is. And they are too few and far between to really get invested in them. The characters are decent. Not as likable as in the first movie, though. Paige, played by Amy Dolans from Pumpkinhead 2, which I just recently reviewed for Shocktober. She was also in Tex, is... Amy Dolans. She's just the young, hip girl from the 90s. Uh, she kind of has an annoying voice in this movie more so than in Pumpkinhead 2 Blood Wings, but I think she does a decent job. I don't hate her as an actress. I kind of liked her in Ticks and Pumpkinhead 2, but this was kind of a weaker performance, especially when she gets angry. It's like she's like, SHUT THE F*** UP! Why do you say it like that? Stop it. Get some help. Shut the f*** up! Russell, played by John Gatkins from Leprechaun 3. Yeah, that one forgot which one it was for a minute, is the suave photographer who is the landlord's sister's brother, and uh, he's younger than her, so she, he is obviously dating material for Paige, and he has kind of a weird temper. Like, it's not really short, but it's more blunt. Mitch, played by Timothy Gibbs, is the, is the pending ex-boyfriend who is super jealous and controlling. Now, out of the two of whom is going to win her heart, I gotta say, I was kind of disappointed with the outcome. Elaine, who is the landlord's sister, played by Larine Newman, who has also done a ton of voice work for big movies, is stuck in 1969. That's her little trait. And it works and it doesn't. She does a good performance, though. She really feels like she's from 1969, one of those hippies that uh had an attitude like uh, a lot of hippies it's all peace and love man until you disagree with me and then uh, i got kind of a well duh you're wrong i mean it's your opinion but you're wrong kind of attitude I can't stand those people sarah who is the villainess of the movie played by julie michaels who was the fbi agent at the beginning of jason goes to hell the final friday does a okay job as the villainess. She doesn't really do much in the movie until the climax, but she's not bad looking, so I guess that's more what they hired her for. Kevin Tenney not only returns as director, but writer as well. He brings some of the same lines and charm from the first movie into this one. Lines like, I've got a bad feeling about this, and there's also a similar one where at the end of the movie it's like, you don't believe these scenes actually work, do you? It's not the exact same line. And even though I was disappointed with who ended up with Paige, I didn't really like either guy. Russell, as I said, had a weird short fuse. His temper was a bit annoying, and Mitch was just a butthole. Paige wasn't too lovable either, which is what I think they were trying to go for with her character. She s stutters a lot, and when she yells, her voice, oh man, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard. Shut the f*** up! up.
I think the stuttering was intentional, but it was way too much. The sets and atmosphere could have used a bit of work, too. The candles and smoke help a bit, but the apartment room is a and a loft aren't well utilized, save for a couple of shots. There are a few cool camera tricks, though. One where it goes right through a keyhole into the room inside. One where it bursts out through windows and into the city streets. That was actually very impressive. It wasn't poorly filmed in that regard, but it didn't look as good as it could have. The gore, the effects, there's a pickaxe through the stomach, a wrecking ball smashes into a car, and a woman at the same time. There's also some gnarly burn wounds and a little else. The effects are solid and the stunts are well choreographed. That's car did some serious airtime in that one scene. There's also a shot with people looking at something, and you can see the reflection in the glass, broken glass, that harkens back to Night of the Demons from 1988. It's less bloody than the first, and that was an easy feat to beat, so that kind of failed there. The motion picture soundtrack, Dennis Michael Tenney returns and composes some decent music. The opening theme is... It was memorable for a day or two for me, then I forgot about it. I remember it had some piano work, I think. Or am I thinking of the demons, too? I don't know. Some of the sound effects from the Evil Dead, yeah, I'm serious. Like when Cheryl pops up to stab Linda. There's also sound effects from the first movie. It doesn't have a catchy song at the end, but the score does some justice to the story. Now, before we wrap this up, let's get into some sweet facts with... Telltale Treats. Now let's get into some Telltale Treats for you guys. Amy Dolenz is Mickey Dolenz's daughter. Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees? Anyone? He actually visited the set at least once. Todd Allen and Kenny Rhodes from the first movie return in a brief cameo as garbage collectors at the end of the film. Don't See It Alone was a tagline used for this movie. It was a poke at the fact that you're not supposed to use a Ouija board alone. This film, overall, was mediocre in its execution. It has decent writing and acting, but I didn't love the characters like the first film. And it was noticeably tame when it came to the gore and scares. I'd say watch this one if you want a Ouija board movie that is above quality, unlike so many others in the subgenre. Before we open up the portal for Witchboard 3, I have to say that overall I give Witchboard 2, The Devil's Doorway, a 2 out of 5. That was a long 5. Thank you all for watching, and I am Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Make sure to like, comment on, as well as share this video. Like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon, or even a dollar a month will help keep this channel going on strong, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Plus, you'll get access to body counts and other music videos that you can't get on YouTube because of copyright and age restriction. Also, hit that notification bell so you'll be reminded when I upload my videos. And as always, subscribe.